from the South or something. <laughs> from the South, where you told you I'm from San Francisco. But I just love doing that because I just feel like it's so great. I like to see how many times I can say it until somebody's head just explodes from human kindness. You know, it's just shit we're not used to. Like, you guys are in LA, we're very similar. We all walk around here very insulated, not talking to anyone, completely engrossed within our telephones. When someone comes remotely close to us, we just look up and yell, I don't have any money! <laughs> No, I scowl and walk away. <laughs> Evidently, that's rude in Tennessee, guys. That's where I learned that. They're just nice for no good reason. Hey, yo, hey! Hey! It's disturbing for, like, the immediate time you experience it, and then you just settle into kindness. You're like, oh. <laughs> this is what it's like to have a dad. <laughs> So I'm sick to share that experience with audiences. Hey, oh, hey. I'm a lady on a show with some ladies. It's awesome. Not always the case. Sometimes you're on shows with all dudes. But it's fine, because I'm a lady who's confident. I love being a woman. Uh, but it doesn't mean I don't understand that this is a very complicated ecosystem. <laughs> it requires a great deal of maintenance and upkeep in order to stay in its tip-top shape. Uh, which means as ladies, we've got responsibilities to ourselves and to the people around us, of course, uh, to find a lady doctor that we trust. You know, find someone you can see on a regular basis. And when you leave, you don't feel like you were fingered by a stranger. You know, just... <laughs> Took me the better part of 30 years to find that doctor. When I did, I knew it was going to be forever because she was in and out of my business in like 10 minutes. And at the end, she looked at me and she said, I just want you to know everything is very clean, very healthy, and very tight. And I was like, excuse me? I don't, I don't think I heard you. Could you, I'm sorry, could you just repeat that last part for me, please? And she looked at me straight faced and said, yes, yes, you have a very tight vagina. And I was like, oh my God. Is it like a certificate of authenticity? A sticker I can put on my driver's license? Like anything commemorative at all? You know, I can leave this office with. I just want something to take on a date next time. You know, something that's proof. And just be like, yeah, yeah, check it out. <laughs> I'm medically tight. <laughs> I think that means I get whatever dessert I want. <laughs> I'll take three. <laughs> like Liam, uh, all of my friends are married and having kids. Uh, I, I like kids. I'm not, a, I'm not a child hater. It's not something I'm going to do myself because I'm a traveling comic, but I don't hate kids. I think they're wonderful. I actually, I revere parents because like parenting is fucking hard, you guys. Like that's really hard. So I commend everyone that's done it, but I hate my friends' kids. I do. I hate every single one of my friends' kids because those children are keeping me from doing the single most important thing in my life. And that is, you guys have brunch. <laughs> fucking love brunch. Single lady in my 30s, I fucking brunch hard. Right? Look at me, I'm built to brunch. It's what I do. Yes. And I thought we were in it together because in our 20s, we fucking brunched hard every weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Fucked up both days, got up right away, went to some substandard restaurant because we know we needed the power of brunch inside. Went to places that weren't even adequate spots that didn't even have a real brunch menu where you show up and the back of the menu just says breakfast all day like that's acceptable. <laughs> Somewhere where all the condiments are individually packaged and those shitty little caddies just sitting there covered with the dust in the middle of the table. Some place that doesn't even have more than two choices of bread. Somewhere that doesn't even know how to poach an egg. Because if we're honest and we're in our 30s and we're at brunch, it's the only way you should be getting your egg. What do you do? Getting them scrambled? Are you sick? <laughs> Some place where you ask for butter and they show up with margarine, like, what? That's not butter. <laughs> they only have those pre-mixed mimosas that only get you drunk while you're actually drinking them, and then as soon as you put them down, you are immediately hungover and filled with regret. Like, we've all done that brunch. Like, I did that brunch several times over in my 20s because, like I said, I thought we were in it together. I thought me and my friends were working towards a collective future in our 30s. We have long, deliberate, elaborate, purposeful brunches. <laughs> brunches that are planned in advance. Brunches that you wake up for sober. Cause you know you gotta get to that restaurant on time. They're not gonna hold that table. Somewhere where you show up and they have a 
drink menu that is so complicated, it includes things you can't even comprehend. Shit like chartreuse. What the fuck is chartreuse? <laughs> I have no idea. Put it in my champagne. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Some places have so many bread choices, they've got biscuits and scones, which if you know anything about breakfast breads are technically the same thing, but so different and you absolutely need both. <laughs> how important condiments are and takes the time to make them in-house. Precious shit like lemon curd, you know, <laughs> orange marmalade, fucking apple butter, <laughs> made in-house. <laughs> Somewhere that does know how to poach an egg and takes the time to poach it perfect, takes the time to poach it perfect and nestle it into a delicate little basket of spinach that has been lovingly sauteed with chicken and garlic. It's right. It has been hit with hollandaise sauce, the cornerstone of brunch. <laughs> Glistening in its golden perfection, like someone just covering a baby Jesus with a blanket. That's how important that fucking sauce is. <laughs> and most importantly, somewhere that serves butter. Real. Butter. So much butter that has been lovingly respected. The place has taken the time to shape it into perfect, delicate little globes. And those little globes have been stacked into pyramids. And those little pyramids have been put onto plates. And those little plates have been put into the fridge so they retain their shape and then taken out with enough time so it reaches room temperature. By the time it reaches your table and you go to spread that across your bread choice, it doesn't fuck up your crumb. <laughs> Ass brunch like that with a fucking toddler at the table? Oh man, fuck your no baby! This is brunch, this is our time, this is now. I've got $200 and three hours investing in fucked up! Can't have those little shitty muffin hands knocking over $15 of food for the call. Man, get the fuck out of here! Have the decency to call your girl and tell her, you know what? I gotta sit this one out. Because I fucked up and had Carlos. <laughs> What I'm saying is this, ladies. We have choices. I choose motherfucking brunch. My name is Lydia Bob Thank you so much.